Good day, it's Steve Fitchman and Strawn Haig here with you today. We're gonna, gonna give you some tips and tricks on the use of SmartView. First thing I wanted to emphasize was the versioning of SmartView. Oracle release uh, updates every couple of months with bug fixes as well as performance improvements. Um, so please continue, um, yeah, please get keep your version current and up to date. Second thing we wanted to just talk about that the platform across which SmartView is being used is, is extending. So we've highlighted the ERP connection there, that's to the ERP cloud instance, uh, the FCCS or consolidation solution, the narrative, the tax reporting, the planning. So those are the different EPM business processes. Uh, we got an example um, here of the connection to the uh, close manager, where all of our closed tasks um, are visible. So Strawn's now gonna sort of pick it up and talk about how that series of connections we see on the right-hand side are set up. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so normally when you set up SmartView for the first time, you'd be given a URL uh, that would be entered into your SmartView options. It looks something like the top one here. Uh, what we've done is replace that with an XML file, the location to an XML file, which can be local or shared. And the XML file itself contains a whole string list of connections that can be across products and across environments. So, and this is how it renders uh, when you hit share connections now. So the uh, the obvious benefit there is that you're able to now flick between uh, the different connections uh, without having to go back to the options menu. And even better, if you've got a common login between those environments, then this uh, seamless transition. You can see that we're in prod and we've just gone straight to test and didn't have to log in again. The next thing I wanted to bring up was uh, some menu options uh, that a lot of people don't aren't aware of. So, they're available by either the right click menu or they also show up down the bottom here so there's a few that i wanted to highlight in particular uh, the first one of those is the uh, business rules so you're able to run any business rule here do your filtering run run your rules and launch directly from uh, the smart view rather than having to go back the other one is the job console which actually renders better here uh, than it does in the web interface uh, if you want to see what's happening within your application and the final one i wanted to highlight was the user preferences. So you can set your user preferences, but more importantly, we use a lot of user variables in our forms. And so rather than again, having to go back to web interface, you can actually adjust the values for all of those directly through SmartView. The final thing just to highlight is that you can do an ad hoc analysis directly from here. You don't need to open a form first. So doing ad hoc analysis opens up the form. And this leads us into our next section, which is the difference between native and standard functionality for the smart view. So a few months ago, Oracle brought this in. Uh, this is set up as uh, standard. The difference being that the standard brings the point of view directly into row one, into the actual grid itself. You can see, and if you contrast that with a native, uh, you can see that we've got the point of view in the floating toolbar. Just quickly, uh, if you want to set this up, this is an admin function that can go into application settings and it's down here, smart view behavior, which will be set to native by default. You can flick it to standard. Uh, we're recommending that all of our new customers do this. And uh, for all of our existing customers, it's just a case of uh, testing to see whether it's appropriate for you. So one of the benefits there is around the copying. So it's much easier because the point of view is already here, you can directly copy and another one is uh, emailing. Uh, another reason that I prefer this one is the ability to link it directly to formulas. So if, the point of view. So if we look at uh, here, we've uh, knocked up a PL across months and similarly uh, an in month uh, variance analysis. All of these, uh, the period here and the entity in both of these are linked to a control sheet. So if you can picture you've got a whole book of these. Uh, all linked by formula here, so that it just means if you go and change one spot, then and refresh all. So you can refresh all worksheets there, and you can see that, that would have flowed through to the individual sheets. So really, really handy for that. Uh, one of the uh, pitfalls that we found, I guess, with this is the ability to keep only and remove only. So you can still do it on an individual level, like so. Uh, but with the standard connection, you can't select multiple versions. So if I try and do that and uh, hit keep only, I'm gonna get an error message. So Oracle is definitely aware of this and presumably working to fix this. 
The final point that I wanted to highlight today was around uh, multi-grids. So again, only available via uh, the standard functionality. To set one up, it's fairly straightforward. Just select an area outside of your grid. This one's set up to the FS. So we're gonna show the workforce. So this option here is only available if you have the standard. And you can see fairly quickly, we've got now two independent grids linked to two different databases uh, in, this, in the same sheet. We can actually take that one step further. Um, and if I just bring up the sheet info here for you, uh, we can see that this one actually has four different grids. Three of them are the same database. So we've got one, two, three. So different databases, same connection. And the final one is actually from our prod connection. So they can actually move between environments as well as between uh, databases within your environment. So the list of uses is endless and we encourage you to get in touch with us with any feedback and uh, potential use cases. The final thing I just wanted to highlight there was relating to the submission. So uh, when we do our submission, uh, if you hit submit here, you're gonna submit everything on the page but Oracle have now also provided us the option of just doing a submission for the specific range. So you can highlight a range there, and instead of hitting submit data, you can just hit submit data range, and that allows you to just enter for one grid without affecting everything else on the page. Again, we encourage you to get in touch with us with uh, any use cases or any feedback related to this. Uh, pass back to Steve. Yeah, thank you, Strawn. And, and just on that multi-grid, um you know things like in, an input and then a review uh, in separate grids um, or across cube validations or across environment checks and balances they're, they're some of the use cases that we're seeing uh, there's probably some room for improvement still here from an oracle perspective with how this uh, renders so that concludes our session today we hope that was helpful thank you